Howdy folks and welcome to 15 Nautical Kamile Arc. We are back in the Caribbean today and we're back in the Winter Twin Otter. And I've been having so much fun flying around the Caribbean. I thought I would do a few more flights down here before we put this thing in its hangar for a while. So today we are at St. Kitts and we're watching the train track go through the airport. That's kind of funny. Anyway, we're in St. Kitts and we're going to fly back to St. Bart's again. I did verify that when air does fly to St. Kitts. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. And after the St. Bart's trip, in a separate video, we'll fly St. Bart's back to Princess Juliana, and then we might take the 727 freighter around a bit, too. And then we'll get out of the Caribbean and start going to other parts of the world. We've spent several flights down here recently, so that is the plan. Um, this is a freeware airport I got off the org for St. Kitts, um, Robert L. Bradshaw. And I like it. I'm not usually a fan of the older stuff too much, but I do like this. So that's kind of cool. Better than the 2D airport that was there. We are flying with some clouds. We are not flying with real world weather. And that's because the real world weather right now down here is nasty. It's steady 20 to 30 mile an hour winds with gusts on top of that and some wind shear. And um, I tried doing a flight off camera because I don't record everything I do. I was doing a flight off camera down here with real weather. And it was a disaster trying to fly this thing. So I decided that we would just turn on some clouds and um, we would just enjoy that. I don't really see the clouds. Well, there they are. You see the shadows on the ground. They're just really high. There they are. Okay, good. Anyway, not much more to say about this place or this aircraft. This is like we've flown this thing like a handful of times already. So we'll just hop on in and we will get started back to St. Bart's. The first thing we're going to do is close the back door, and we'll come up here, and we'll close our door, and the passenger front door would be oh, already closed, and it is. Uh, I have to turn the battery neck and DC on because there's no external power modeled in here. I like that light. I discovered that the other day. So let me get my checklist off for this thing, and we'll get started up here. All right, my checklist is in hand, and we're going to get some fuel going here. Um, we do not need two and a half hours. Let's do an hour at most. The flight should only be about 28 minutes or so. There we go. And I am recording with Bandicam today. Um, I've been playing around with this the past couple days and I've been having problems with it. It keeps losing this hook or losing this target. And it randomly stops recording. And I try to start another recording and it won't find the target. So I've adjusted some settings. And the fact that you're watching this shows that it either works smoothly or I was able to fake it with my editing and get a video out to you guys. But um, I'm kind of frustrated with Bandicam at this moment. The trial was wonderful, it was perfect. And so I decided to pay for it and I'm having problems and it turns out everyone on the internet is having problems. But hopefully what I'm saying today will be completely obsolete soon and it will have nothing to do with Bandicam in the future. Cause I really do like it. It has no frame rate hit. It has all the features I need. It records separate audio tracks. It's awesome. It's just it stops recording every once in a while, and that's very frustrating, especially when I'm doing long flights and stuff. All right, let's turn that on. Let's turn this on. We are not going to use any radios today, although I'd like to turn them on anyway. We are going to put ourselves in here, though, and we will, as a menu, yes, and then we're going to clear flight plan. Yes, and then we're going to push this guy and put in St. Bart's, which is Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Juliet's. There we go, and we'll hit enter and accept it. And we'll come up here so like that. Yes, and we'll go direct to. And then it'll show up on our flight plan. We are gonna use GPS or autopilot, and we're gonna fly at 8,000 feet. It always goes 8,000 feet. I'm like, hey, why not? Let's just use 8,000 feet. Uh, no radios, like I said. Uh, the rest of autopilot we'll do in the air, so we're not going to talk about that right now. Instead, we are going to start up these engines. And while I'm doing this, if anybody has any tips about Bandy Cam and how to get it to stop, stop recording, so it doesn't stop recording on me, that would be quite appreciated. Um, like I said, at the time of this recording, those are my issues. This may, my comments may be obsolete in the future, but for right now, I need help with it. All right, we'll do props forward, and that's just because there's no sound when you feather them. And I guess we are ready to start this up already. So we'll do both at the same time, and here we go.
And we have a spinning prop. Let's go inside and do the other side. And there we go again. Outstanding. So now... We should probably go up here and get some lighting on since we're up and running. And no smoking. And fasten your seatbelt. There we go. Man, we'll be taxiing in a second. Might as well get this started now. Maybe we can turn on some of these lights too. I could have done this sooner, but it's daylight out. Alright, we gotta get these generators to reset and then turn them on or else they won't turn off on the warnings panel. Turn all that on and bleed air. We're not going to worry about prop the ice today. I already have my emergency armed. And I think we're ready to go. Whoops, I did I turn that on and keep it on? I thought he turned that off. Anyway, all the warnings are out. GPS is loaded. Autopilot is set. We will mess with those things later. I discovered the other day off camera that if you set all this up now and you engage it later, if you set up on the ground and engage it later, it does whatever it wants. So we're not going to do that. Um, I guess we're ready to taxi out of here. We are going to go left and then turn around and then runway actually we might just turn and get on the runway there and stay that I don't think we need to turn around that is a long runway so let's just go there straight ahead and then we'll turn around to the right take off runway 7 uh, let's just hop in this view this view makes it easier to taxi and is a little more interesting so let's see if we can get rolling here hopefully we don't have any scenery issues Speaking of that, if you recall, our first landing at St. Bart's was troublesome because of the scenery. The scenery interpreted our passage as a crash. And then our second landing at St. Bart's, I had real world weather turned on and the wind was atrocious. And I bounced and I was very disappointed. But that's okay. Never give up. So hopefully this time we will have a textbook landing at St. Bart's. Also with this bandy cam is interesting because when I have bandy cam on standby and I have the sim loaded, it says X-Plane is OpenGL, which it is. However, as soon as I start recording in bandy cam, it changes and says it's DirectX 11. I just find that very strange. So I'm just wondering if that has something to do with my problem. Because X-Plane, to my understanding, is not DirectX, it's OpenGL, which is why I can be on several platforms at once. Alright, let's turn here if we can. Get around that distance marker. And hop out to the center here. And I think we can still just use 20 degree flap. I don't think we need 30 degrees. Alright, let's hop back inside here. And get our flaps down. 20 degrees. There they are. And I think we are ready to go. We'll take off the parking brake, hold our regular brakes, give this thing full power, let it spool up, and away we go. And let's see if we can take off smoothly here. If you remember, we took off on, from Saba, that crosswind was atrocious. But here, winds are turned off or default or whatever you might want to call them. And we're up. No gear, but we will let the flaps in here. Get some speed right away. There we go. Let's have a look out the windows quick. Alright, already the island's disappearing on us. There's a nice island shot there. Except we have to fly our plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to climb about this rate and then we'll get closer to line up with our GPS and then we'll engage autopilot. So we will do nav and IS hold. And we'll do alt alert, which is 8,000 feet. And in a moment here, we will engage autopilot. We should hold our speed. And we should go towards our GPS. I just don't want to have any abrupt banks or turns. So. That looks really nice, though. I should have lowered the clouds a little bit. 
All right, we'll engage autopilot now. Still going to turn left, isn't it? And then turn right, whatever. That's okay. Um, we'll leave the landing lights on, I think, because we're not going very high and we're commercial flight. Everything else up here, I think, is good. We'll keep that stuff the way it is. So here we're going to fly towards your GPS. 33 nautical miles, and then as soon as we get to 8,000 feet, we'll smooth out and gain, gain a lot more speed. So that being said, I think we're just ready to let the airplane fly itself for a while. Let's check my checklists here, make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh, yeah, I forgot to start the clock. This is what happens when you make a nice checklist and you don't look at it. You forget little things like that. Alright, let's have a few looks from inside and then we'll do some sightseeing. I see St. Bart's up there. It's hilarious because the cloud shadows are covering it. But it's there, and um, yeah, these cloud shadows are a little bit on the dark side, and I can lighten that up, but too late now. I do like on the horizon, though, that they did fix that jagged edge thing going on where the cloud line stops. They fixed that in 3.2.1. Talking about SkyMax Pro, of course. But anyway, I see the island. I hope you do too. I'm going to come down a little bit here. We will use a managed descent before we go autopilot. So we're going to go down to about 1700 or so. 1600, good enough. And we will use IAS and a managed descent. And the reason I can do that is I can bring the throttle down and we'll come down without losing speed. But I have to be very careful with the throttle because it's very sensitive. All right, so let's see. Um, landing lights are already on. It's such a short flight. And everyone's fastened in. Flaps we'll do when we're closer to final. Like usual, we'll do a full flap nose down landing. We're not gonna do a forward slip because they do not do a forward slip at this airport in this, air in this aircraft. They do a full flap nose down. So that's what we'll do. In a little bit, we will curve to the left and there's a little island out here we'll aim for aim for there and just for the record my banding cam has not stopped recording it's been working the whole time so I'm very excited about that and normally it would have stopped by now so excited to report that but I'm sorry the island is here I'm not sure what that was but there's an island here we're going to aim for and we'll do that soon and what we'll do is we'll use heading hold for that Let's come down a little faster. Let's come down here so I can see what in the world I'm doing. And we will turn out that way in a moment. All right, we're ready to turn out there. So we're going to hit heading, and then that'll turn us towards my heading bug. So we can go by that island. 
And then that's what you will use to line up for final. Oops, I may have been a little overzealous here. Let's let's go back. There we go. That should be better. Yeah, much better. Good. Alright. Still descending at a rather quick pace, but we need to. I'm wondering if the shadows of the clouds on the ocean surface really are this dark in real life. I've never had a chance to notice cloud shadows over a big body of water. I should look into that. Because on land, this setting for shadows is perfect. But in the water, it's way too much of a good thing. You can see the cloud reflections, though. That's awesome. And I'll kill autopilot pretty soon. We'll manage the descent ourselves. All right, we're coming up on our selected minimum altitude here, which means we'll slow down in a hurry because I have the throttle back quite far. And then we will manage our final turn on towards the runway at St. Bart's. So there we are, we're coming up now, making some adjustments so we line up with that island, but not too close to the island. I can come a little bit more. I'm just going to kill autopilot first. So autopilot is off. And we're going to slow down now. And I'll start managing flaps in a moment. There's an island. We were lined up for it, but then it seems like the slight imaginary breezes kind of blew us off course a little bit. Has to be expected when you're using a heading hold instead of something like VOR lock. Runway is almost in sight. I see it now. Right, so we'll come down to about a thousand feet and then we'll start our flaps and slowing down even more. Bring back throttle even more and we'll go right around this island. Target coordinate might turn a little bit. There we go, since I can. Uh, 1,100 feet now. And my rudder paddle is sticking a little bit. Alright, we're right about over the island, so we'll start turning this way. Bring that throttle, start bringing in some flaps, and as we bring in the flaps, we have to increase our throttle. So there's 20 degree flaps right off the bat. And there's our island, and there's our runway. And Bandicam is still recording. That just adds a whole nother element for me to worry about right now, but I have to ignore it. As soon as we straighten out here, we'll hit 30 degree flaps. And then we'll slow down and hit 40. Okay. Throttle's almost all the way back. We'll go 30 degree flaps, it'll make us float a little. I don't need any throttle because I'm coming down. I want to skim those trees as closely as possible. Now hit 43 flaps when we get down to about 80 knots. Which is right about now. I really need to make sure I'm managing my throttle because it's going to make us slow way down. And you just have to pretend there's a gigantic hill here. That hill on the left should be kind of where we are now. I know the runway's in the right spot, but that hill seems to be a little displaced. So here we are. Seems just above stall speed. And we have good brakes and reversers, so we don't really need to worry about landing at the very, very end. We can float a little bit and smooth it out. But we do have to come down though, see? Alright, so nose down, full flap, throttle off. And we'll just float a little bit. Come down nice and soft. There we go, brakes, reversers, and my paddles are sticking like usual. I have to fix that. 
you're wondering what I'm talking about, my rudder control is on my paddles, on my yoke. And they stick. So when I return them to center, they don't actually return to center. And that's the reason for my oblique movement when I'm trying to taxi and land like you just saw. But I'll fix that off camera. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on how to fix these yokes when they get stuck. I honestly think it's because it's new and um, I have to break it in still. But I'm not quite sure. Alright, there we go. No scenery issues. It seemed to be a smooth landing, but we'll be able to tell in a minute here once we check out the replays. Could have been a little straighter, but I was having paddle problems. I'll just call them paddle problems. Alright, let's slow down a little bit here. Actually, let's hop outside. More fun. There we go. See, now we're under a cloud shadow and it looks just fine. And the cloud shadows on those hills back there look fine, but over the water they just look horrible. There we go. Pull in nicely. Man, I'm really fighting these paddles. They're really, um... Oh, well, whatever. I'll stop talking about the paddles. Now, we cannot tax in front of that hangar, or the scenery will think we crashed again. So we're not going to go there. Instead, I'm just going to park right by that deer. Look out, buddy. That's where we're going. I'm just going to stop right here. There we go. Hang out there. Hit the parking brake. And let's have a look at some replays. There we go. Looks like we have a hot air balloon that we missed, thankfully. There's our nose down landing. There is a hill there in the sim. You only notice it if you're flying it, though. Let me float. And nice gentle touchdown. And then my paddle got stuck. But we stayed on the runway. Barely. Did we stay? Oh, yes, we stayed. <laughs> Barely, but we did. All right, let's have a passenger view. All right, coming over the hill. If you want to call it a hill. Traffic stopped to watch us. There's a roundabout you see on YouTube. Coming down and floating. We floated a little longer than we needed to, but we had plenty of runway. There you go. Reversers and paddles and brakes. And there we go. Let's try a runway view. Let's see if we can do a runway view without crashing. There you go, coming in. I still think that hill off to the right is supposed to be here, but anyway. Yeah, we floated way longer than we needed to, but I was just focused on a soft touchdown. Good, let's go back to real time. All right, we're back inside and we're gonna shut this thing down. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on our lights for our folks. We'll keep the seatbelt on for a second though because um, we wanna shut this down first. There we go. We can turn our igniters off. And our landing lights can come off. We'll keep that on for now so our passengers can see what they're doing. Turn off some of this stuff. Oh, we have external power on. No, there's no external power on this. I keep forgetting. All right, so let's see. This can come off. Now they can come out. We'll keep that on. We'll turn these off. And I believe our lights are on. They are. We can open up the door for them. We'll come out here. Come up here and open our door. We can turn our own lights off here. Well, whatever. There has to be a method to this madness. Up, down. <laughs> there we go. Got it. It only took 17 tries. Good. At some point, everybody will be unboarded so we can kill our power here. And go, I'll go to external if we had it. But There you go. Everybody's out. Lights are off, right? Can't do anything. Good. Let's hop on outside. All right, folks. There we go. We landed at St. Bart's again. Um, this will be the last time we're going to land here, at least for the foreseeable future. There's plenty of world to dis discover and explore. Our next flight, though, will take us back to Princess Juliana, where we'll hang up this thing for good. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed it. If you found me by accident, please subscribe. If you're a regular subscriber, thank you for your continuing support. And I'll catch you on the next one.